this video we are going to be comparing two very common brushless starting out systems. Right here we have a Sidewinder 3 and over here we have the 4-pole new version Traxxas Valenian system. Now what I want to accomplish in this video is to help you choose in between this system or this system. So I'm going to be comparing my specs and um, what vehicles I've used them on and just uh, just kind of help you familiarize yourself with which system you should get for your model. So, um, there's some things you need to know before doing this. I'm going to be uh, doing the comparison in between the motors and the ESCs because they are two different units and you can mix and match them if you want to, but usually you find them in their combo together. Um, and then there's another thing, I may be biased with this because I could favor, I'm just a human being, okay, I don't get everything right. And, uh, yeah, I guess now we're going to move on. We're going to start by comparing these two motors. Alright, so now we're going to start with some specs on the motors. Both these motors have a 3mm output shaft, which is common for your 110 scale vehicles, which have a 3mm bore for the pinion gear. So that's really nice to have. For the motor wires, the bullet connectors on the end of the Sidewinder, or the 1406 motor as some call it, it's 4mm bullet connectors, whereas with the Valenian motor, they're 3.5mm bullet connectors. It doesn't really make a difference, and I believe these are both 12 gauge wires on the end of the motor, so that doesn't really make a difference. Another important thing is the operating voltage. So for this motor, it really just depends, based on your KV, you could actually uh, put a higher voltage into it. But usually for these motors, you want to go in between a 2 and 3 cell LiPo and a 4 to 10 cell nickel metal or nickel cadmium battery. So that's the same for both of the motors. Now let's take a look at the build quality. So I'm actually going to take off the screws and the pinion. We're going to take a look on the inside. So the build quality for the Valenian motor is actually really nice. We have this nice wire going on the outside, blue anodization for the can of it. And then if we remove this plastic end cap, you can see that over here we have the rotor, which we'll be taking a look at in a second. So here we have the rotor, which has the magnets on it. On the inside here we have the coiled wire uh, which sends the magnetism through to the rotor and spins it. But yeah, this thing is actually pretty big. We're going to take some measurements of this and uh, just see how big the rotor is. Overall, I, I gotta say I really like the build quality of this Valenian motor. So for the Castle motor, it's still pretty good quality. We have the CNC machined aluminum can on the outside that's anodized green which is really nice the shaft doesn't stick out as much as a Valenian motor but it doesn't really matter all that much and then we took out three screws on here and we could pop the end cap off so this one you can see is significantly less long than the Valenian motor one from this information I'm just going to do some measurements and some quick math we could find out how much that actually really matters for the performance of these motors. So for the diameter of the castle rotor, it is 17.4 millimeters, and the length is approximately 18 millimeters. So it's all right. But over here on the Valenian motor, I assume we're going to have the same diameter. Yep, 17.3. Then the length of this one. is 27 millimeters. So that's a pretty big difference. So if we just do some quick math on that. Now that means in theory that this rotor inside the Valenian motor is going to create an extra 50% more torque or magnetism compared to the one in the castle motor, which is quite significant. It's also going to affect our amp draw, our motor temperatures, and how much weight it can move. Let's take a look at the price if you were to be paying for these motors individually. Now this one on a certain website costs $70 brand new for the 4-pole motor. It's actually not too bad. 
and for this castle motor, well, since about a year ago, they've actually discontinued discontinued the sensorless motor and they've replaced it with their censored line but their censored line costs $75 so I assume this one if you can find it anywhere like brand new would be around $65 so overall which one do I think is better I think the Valenium motor definitely has a lot going for it it's rebuildable you can get rebuild kits for it from Traxxas so it's simple to do it comes with instructions you have a five, three millimeter shaft on the end and it just looks really really good it's going to be creating a lot of torque as well because of that large rotor whereas this castle motor I think it could definitely use some improvements I really think they should include a longer can with their system but hey that's just my opinion so if you can I'd recommend getting the Valenian motor so now let's move on to the ESC's so of course just like with the motors we're gonna start out with the specs so both of these ESC's take in between a 2 to 3S LiPo, which is what most of us are going to be using. And if you're still behind on NIM, well, it'll take in between a 6 and 14 cell, which is pretty good. That's for both of them, of course. Now for the VXL ESC, this is rated for 200 amps continuous, and I've heard that this ESC is rated for 80 amps continuous, so that's a pretty major difference. Now what that means is, depending on your setup with your motor, let's say they're using the exact same motor with the exact same gearing on the same vehicle. If that motor is drawing, let's say, 100 amps, and it's connected to this ESC, this isn't going to have a problem, it's barely going to get warm at 100 amps continuous, whereas this one, which is only rated at 80, might even go up in smoke. Um, so that's just something to think about. If you want to run a high amp draw application, like a really heavy big vehicle with an oversized motor, you definitely want to stick with something like this because it's going to be able to handle all those amps a lot better, whereas this one will not be able to. Both of these ESCs have a built-in BEC, which is a battery eliminator circuit. So for this receiver wire, which plugs into your receiver on both of them, both of these uh, send 6 volts to the receiver. So that's really good. And that's also going to be the same voltage which is sent to the servos and other devices. On the VXL Valenian system, it has this plug built in to the ESC which can plug into a fan that will stick right on top. I actually have one right here. I think that's just a really nice touch uh, that Traxxas thought of there. So you just plug it right in and whenever you turn on the ESC it'll turn on with it. Now the VXL system alone I believe it is quite expensive. On Traxxas's website they sell it for around $200 which is quite a ripoff. I know you can find it for way less if you buy it used or like on eBay or something like that or uh, from someone else but from Trax's website $200 a lot of us can't afford that and I believe it's even more expensive with the motor whereas uh, with this ESC you can get it for around $70 on Castle Creations website so that's definitely something it has going for it the price now the build quality is about the same for both of them they just have a little plastic case around the outside same with this one the bullet connectors on the end on the VXL they are 3.5 millimeters on the Castle one they are 4 millimeters so that's just something to think about if you want to run different motors you can have to make yourself adapters or change the connector on the motor itself now another thing that's really convenient about the Valenian system is because they sell this on tracks this vehicles they have simple little mounting tabs on the sides for you, you could slide a screw through and just mount it to the chassis or the ESC mounting plate. Whereas with this one, it doesn't have anything for it, which is pretty inconvenient. So you'd have to go out and get an RPM ESC cage, which not everybody wants to do, or you could string a wire through it, or you could just leave it dangling around, which was uh, something I did for a while. It honestly doesn't really matter. You don't need it to be secure to the vehicle, as long as it doesn't come flying out in the middle of you driving, that will be fine. Um, but they do sell additional cages for this, and I actually designed one myself, which I will be selling on eBay pretty soon, so look forward to that. Now, a major advantage that the Castle 
Sidewinder ESC has for it is it's programmable. You can do a lot of things with this ESC so it'll send different amounts of punch to the motor so on so forth. With this one you have about eight different options. You can change the amount of punch, you can change in between brushless and brushed motors, you can change the amount of forward um, and reverse you give to it, you can change the amount of braking you give to it, you can, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of different stuff you can do with this. The only thing is it's not very convenient to change those options. On the Valenian system, all you have the ability to do is full blast and then there is a sport mode which does not have reverse and then there's another one which changes the amount of throttle to only 50%. And that's kind of lame because it's always going to be sending the same amount of punch to the motors and um, if you're a person that generally doesn't want to wear down their tires extremely quickly I think this is really nice because you can change the amount of punch it's sending to the motor which will in turn change how much traction you're going to be generating on startup. Overall, I would pick this one, but it is a lot more expensive. So, um, generally, you want to get this ESC. Another thing worth noting is that if you are a beginner getting either one of these ESCs, the Valenian already comes pre-soldered with the Traxxas connector on it, which is really nice, so you don't have to do any soldering or have someone else do it or get a separate connector. Whereas with the Castle motor, you have to get your own connector and solder it up yourself or have someone else do it. So that's just another thing to consider. So now I'm going to share a little bit about my personal experience with both of these systems. Now, I was able to get this first brushless system for me for $110 on Amazon for the motor and the ESC. So it was a really good price for a brand new item. And then I got this Valenian system used on eBay for a hundred and twenty dollars so it's pretty good considering so um, the brand new price for this may be extremely high but you can find these systems used for a fairly good price if you look around and then on the castle systems you can also buy them brand new if you'd like to it's a really good price you don't find them used very often because people generally like to keep their castle systems um, but yeah that's just something to consider once again. Now it greatly depends on how you like to drive and what kind of vehicle you want to put this in depending on which system you want to buy. For this one it's a lot more plug and play. For this one you need to do a little bit of fiddling around to get it to work. And if you're on a budget I highly re recommend getting this system and tuning down the settings. But if you have the money I'd recommend getting something like the Valenian system where you just slap it into your vehicle and you're pretty much ready to go. Another major thing is the size of your vehicle. So if you are running this system inside of a slash 4x4, you should have no problem. At least a stock slash 4x4. I like to use it inside my slash, but I do have a pretty heavy roll cage on the outside, which gives the motor a little bit of a hard time. But if I were to try running this system in it, it would just be way too difficult on it. Alright, so that's my video comparing the VXL to the SV3. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please leave a like. It helps a lot. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I generally answer quite quickly, and I'll give you a pretty good response if you're just having trouble picking in between one or the other. Alright, that's my video. Talk to you guys later.